Hello everyone and welcome to another short video on our own devices. I'm Jean Mesti and today we're having a look at a 5 inch Aldis signal lamp. This was used by various military and civilian organizations during the Second World War and for many years beyond to send optical signals using Morse code. Now, although long-range optical signaling has been around since antiquity in the form of signal fires, smoke signals, flag signals, and the like, the use of flashing lights to send messages long distances is a surprisingly recent development, dating back only as far as the 1860s. So in 1869, Henry Mance, a British telegraph engineer based in India, invented the heliograph, which is a mirror that can be used to send signals using reflected flashes of sunlight. We'll actually be looking at the fascinating history of the heliograph in an upcoming video. Now, just two years earlier, in 1867, the Royal Navy adopted its first powered signal lamp, which was invented by Captain Philip Coulomb. And this was part of Coulomb's major tactical reorganization of the Royal Navy in the wake of the adoption of steam power. Now, Coulomb's lamp used what's known as a limelight, which is a form of gas lamp powered by hydrogen and oxygen, in which the flame is directed against a piece of calcium oxide or lime to produce an extremely bright white light. And since these lamps were very often used as theater spotlights, this is the origin of the expression to be in the limelight. Now, because you can't turn a limelight on and off quickly enough to send a viable signal, Coulomb's design incorporated a set of metal shutters that could be very quickly opened and closed using a lever. And this has remained the standard design to the present day, despite the fact that the source of light has evolved from limelight to arc lamp to incandescent bulb. That's because typically these light sources also can't be switched on and off quickly. Now it's important to note here that rapid signaling is a relative term since the maximum speed that can be achieved by these lamps is around 14 words per minute, while the NATO standard for operators is only 8 words per minute. Now Coulomb did develop his own flashing code for use with his lamp, and this was used by the Royal Navy for seven years until it was finally replaced by standard Morse code. Now, when these lamps were introduced, they were the only way that ships could communicate at night or in bad weather or at far longer ranges than were possible with traditional communications methods, such as flag signals or semaphore. However, they were retained long after the adoption of wireless communication and indeed are still carried by naval vessels to this day. This is because signal lamps are very useful for communication in situations where, say, radio silence is being maintained, uh, where spoofing of radio signals by the enemy is likely, or where a ship's communications gear has failed. And to increase communication security, these lamps can be fitted with a variety of colored filters to reduce the range over which they can be perceived, or even infrared filters so that the signal can only be seen through infrared detection devices. Now, use of signal lamps is not restricted to the Navy. Many armies have also made extensive use of them. For example, during the 1899 to 1902 South African War, aka the Second Boer War, both the Boers and the British made use of heliographs during the day and signal lamps at night. And the British in particular used a type of signal lamp called a Begbie lamp, which was an oil-fired lamp with a focusing lens and a set of shutters mounted in front of the lens. And during the First World War, in situations where ordinary telephone or telegraph lines were cut, both sides also used signal lamps to communicate between trenches, especially the Germans, whose lamps could be used to communicate as far as 4 kilometers during the day and 8 kilometers at night. And I've mentioned before that I absolutely love the German language for how straightforward and blunt it can be, and I especially love the name of their signal lamps, which was Blinkgerät, which literally means blinking device. Now, the lamp that we have here is a 5-inch Aldus lamp, and this was invented in 1941 by British inventor Arthur Aldus, who, along with his brother Lancelot, formed the company Aldus Brothers Limited in Birmingham. And this works a little bit differently from traditional signal lamps in that it doesn't have any shutters, but rather sends the signal through the use of a tilting parabolic mirror. So on the handle here, we have two triggers. The one in the rear is an electrical switch for supplying power to the light bulb, while the one in the front tilts the mirror up and down in order to send flashes of light. And this could be fitted with two different types of light bulb. There was a 36 volt version that was meant to be plugged into the electrical mains on a ship, 
and there was a 12 volt version which was for use with a battery such as when these were carried aboard aircraft and that would connect to this plug in the bottom of the handle and both lamps produced 150,000 candle power. You'll notice that we have quite a few sighting devices atop this lamp. We not only have a telescopic sight but also a set of aperture sights and a set of open notch sights. And this is because the beam produced by this lamp is very narrow. It spreads out at only about half a degree. And so you really have to be looking almost directly down the bore axis of the lamp in order to receive the signal. Now this is great for signal security for ensuring that nobody else is able to intercept your signal, but it also means that you need to aim towards your intended recipient very accurately, otherwise they won't receive the signal. Hence the need for all of these different sights. So handheld Aldus lamps were not only used by navies, but also by air forces being supplied to airfield control towers and carried aboard aircraft to establish backup communications in case an aircraft's radio failed. And indeed, this is still done to this day. Most airfields will have a blinking signal lamp to communicate with aircraft whose communication systems have failed. However, these lamps aren't used to send signals in Morse code. Rather, there is a small set of prearranged signals to communicate only the most urgent messages. So, for example, for an aircraft in flight, a steady green light means cleared to land. A flashing green light means return for landing. A steady red light means give way to other aircraft and continue circling. A flashing red light means airport unsafe, do not land. And an alternating green and red light means exercise extreme caution. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time in another video where we'll look at yet more fascinating communications tools and other devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jin Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.